I love me a roguelike deck builder, but because there's so many of them coming out, because it's quite a low budget thing that relies on good game mechanics to get it right, it's really difficult to distinguish yourself out from a crowd when it's getting increasingly crowded in the genre. But one game that has been doing that for me with a plum over the last week since it came into early access is Heat Death. Heat Death is a roguelike deck builder that is themed on planets and solar systems and galaxies. The idea is that you are a planet instead of being a character, and instead of being in a dungeon, you're crossing various solar systems and galaxies to escape an impending wave of corruption that is taking out planets, moons, satellites, everything in its path. This means that you get to pick a planet that will be made up of different elements, and that essentially gives you an entirely unique deck of cards for every planet that you can choose. And currently in early access, there are three to choose from. But also, it gives you a totally different play style depending on which planet you pick. Currently in the early access build, there are three planets to choose from. You've got the human planet, which allows you to build up attacks and go in all guns blazing if you want. But you can also send up drones to act as an additional buffer for either your defences or to buff them with passive abilities so that you can almost become a swarm of clusters of planets and drones to attack all of the different planets that you're going to be smashing out of the way for your playthrough. The radioactive planet instead doesn't focus on that. It's about self-harm and self-sabotage, really, in a way, because quite a lot of the cards in this deck revolve around you taking damage yourself uh, or sending up moons and satellites to then blast and kill and convert that into damage that you can then send out in single fiery bursts of damage and attacks for your opponents. The Storm Planet is an interesting one because it's about survival instead. And what this is all about is sending up different satellites and additional like cyclones around you to be able to survive and get stronger and stronger and stronger over time. So at the beginning of a round, you're incredibly weak, but you're buffing and buffing and buffing and getting stronger and stronger so long as you can survive that long. So between the human normal interactions, the high risk, high reward style of radioactive and this can I cling on and then be ultimately powerful storm playthrough, they really do play and feel different. And the fact that they have decks of cards that do not cross over really plays into that. This is a permadeath game, but every game is procedurally generated for you to try and wander your way through. And each map starts off with you picking a cluster of uh, stars or planets, and then you'll dive into that and then work your way towards the central sun and then try and conquer that before moving on to the next cluster in your solar system or galaxy. So how does this kind of work on a turn by turn base? Let's dive in. On a battle screen, you'll see in the bottom left hand corner your total energy that you can use per turn, usually four. And then you can see the cards that are pulled from your randomly generated deck that you'll slowly add to and change and multiply and adapt over time. And they'll pull out some of those cards and you can see each one has a name and then there's a number in brackets. And that's the amount of energy that it will take. Some will be zero, one, two, three um, and four potentially if you upgrade them in that way. The idea is that you will then select in turn the different types of cards to then build up what your planet is going to do at the end of that move for your turn. The crux is that you can see what the next turn is going to be with your enemy because it's hovering above each of their heads. So there's an icon that tells you what the damage is going to be like. Then it will tell you if they're going to buff, it will say if they're going to shield something. And then once you've completed and ended your turn, you'll take your moves, the enemy will take theirs, and then it will be refreshed so that you can then see what their next move is going to be and act accordingly. So it's really about planning and strategizing against what that next move is going to be. And it's really key to time what you're doing well. So if there's going to be a ginormous attack coming your way, you'll need to think of, have I got enough HP and health to get through this? But also, 
do I need to buff up some shields? Because shields only last for a single turn and then then gone forever. But they'll stop you being hurt and losing your HP. Or it could be that you want to get up some additional satellites or moons instead to act as that first line of defence. Take all the damage and die off on your behalf, usually. That just depends on the playstyle that you're looking to go for. Additionally, um, you might want to or be able to see that you can get in and kill that enemy before their attack happens. Or it might be that you're not strong enough to attack and their next move is uh, all about them putting in shields or they're already shielded, for example. So you're not going to bother with attacks this time around because their shield again will be gone next turn. So this time you focus on healing, buffing, getting new moons or satellites up and running and getting your kind of planet in order for its next round of attack. So that's what's going on on the main screens, but there's some additional things going on that slant the play style that you need to think about. As you move from cluster of star to cluster of star, whenever you conquer a sun, you gain access to new technology. And those are displayed on the very top of the screen. Um, some of that will be more lenient depending on what difficulty level you've selected. But these will be things like passive abilities such as gaining shield each turn or giving shields to all of your um, allies such as satellites or drones or moons at the beginning of each turn. It could be that it's increasing the uh, damage of something or giving you 25% damage increase as like a general buff somewhere. Uh, it could be that it increases your energy or you could convert some of your health into energy, for example. There's all different types of permutations here. And whether it be in cards or in tech at the very top, building out your planet in that way, again, with slanted to your playstyle is very helpful. There's also two additional kind of currencies going on at the same time too. One that carries across all of the playstyles at the moment that was very recently introduced is this concept called artillery. And this is based off of the damage that you cause your opponents. And you can convert that into uh, either shields or, uh, for instance, maybe some more energy or recovering some health. And again, how that works depends on the planet that you've chosen. The second currency is renamed totally differently depending on the planet that you choose. So for the radioactive planet, it works as radioactivity. And this can be uh, increased depending on the cards that you play. So there might be a card that says attack each enemy five damage, increase radioactivity by two. And for this planet, that means that the base attack of every card that you're playing in this battle will go up by two. And the key thing for that is that you've got some cards in your um, deck for that one that are one time only per battle cards um, because they'll have the exhaust on it, um, which is like its condition for you use it once per battle and that's it. And it'll be things like take 50 damage, increase radioactivity by 15. So you're like, hmm, I've got enough health to, to do that. And then all of a sudden, now all of my attacks have now got an extra 15 damage, which is great. And um, the key with this is that radioactivity decreases over time. So you constantly are looking and fishing for different ways to raise that up to therefore raise up all of your base attacks. On the flip side, that's not how that currency works for the human planet or the storm one. So, for example, the storm planet doesn't have radioactivity. It has something called magnitude, which means that if you constantly play with that, at the end of each turn, you'll gain whatever your magnitude is back in health. So that means that you can be allowed to be more aggressive as you get both beefier and beefier because you've got like regen going on in the background, taking this like to RPG terms. So again, very different play style. Are you buffing and going for it? Or are you trying to beef up a big attack and then going nuts for it? Sounds similar, really affects your play style. The other things to note, of course, I mentioned that you have exhaust cards, which means that you can only play them once per turn. As you play through your cards, whatever's been dealt in your hand that you don't use, largely they all go into your discard pile. And then once you've kind of gone through all of those cards, 
uh, in your deck, they'll all move back and go through again. So you won't kind of lose cards and not see them again for the rest of the battle, because especially on the harder difficulties, those battles can be very hard won. And then once you get into your boss at the end of each cluster of stars, and there's like a sun in the centre that you're then going to go into battle with, it's really key to make sure that you... Uh, use your deck effectively because you really having to think on your feet because those bosses can be absolutely hard as nails. <laughs> a couple of other things are really interesting twists too though and they take place between the battles. So I mentioned that you get tech like as just general upgrades at the end of each uh, when, whenever you've uh, beaten a, a sun and you've passed that kind of cluster. There's another really cool feature where you get to land on like empty planets or empty stars and you can trade with that planet to swap out one of your cards for a different card and that allows you to diversify your deck and sometimes really alter your play style. The other thing that you can do as well is combine cards. So you might have two uh, like flares or fires for example which give seven damage each uh, and raise either like the magnitude or, or radiation or something like that by one or two but they cost one energy each um, some of those you can combine together and then you'll have one that's double strength but it will cost two energy to do but if they don't affect things like the radioactivity or the magnitude or um, some some like weird permutation somewhere They'll do dam double damage, but they'll still stay one or two points and they won't increase up. So there's sneaky ways how you can build your deck stronger by upgrading your cards in that fashion. I found it really helpful to do that with shields because shields usually don't affect other things um, or health recoveries. So um, having a cheap but powerful shield or health replenishment card, very crucial for me. <laughs> I have to say the balancing on this is absolutely superb and the fact that there doesn't seem to be duff cards but just ways to play the strategy really made me feel like Heat Death truly understands what makes a diversific... A, a, can't even say it. A diversified rogue-like deck builder. Get your teeth in, Simon. <laughs> because... There's just so many different ways to play and they all feel viable. Quite often when you go into these games, you kind of go, oh, well, why are you giving me all of these different cards? They don't work. I've tried going through, uh, particularly with the Storm Planet, in multiple different ways of doing the game and each one felt viable and that I could get somewhere and I could get to the final bosses and still be within, like, in with a chance. And that's quite rare for deck builders, especially something that has just literally come out onto early access. So I have nothing but absolutely high praise for this. This is buy-worthy in its current state now. Didn't run into any bugs or any issues like that. The only kind of finickety thing that I would say is that on the solar system, as you move between stars, the UI is a bit clunky in that. Um, but as that aside, this game is really shaping up to be an absolutely fantastic roguelike deck builder and I strongly suggest you get on a bandwagon early because I certainly have. Uh, a written review will be coming out later on once this game reaches a much further developed point over on higherplanegames.com but if you have any comments or questions about what it is in its current state just drop a comment down below and I'll get back to you on it because um, yeah, this was such a random pickup that I am delighted to have discovered and I think lots of people need to know about it. Take care. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higherplanenetwork. Your support makes all the difference, and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.